This guy's so good. Dude, he's right at my first touch screen. Moving through. I remember my first <laughs> cell phone tumor. Right, guys. Welcome to Game Day Battle with Cleveland Sports News means biased and outspoken opinion. A full complement of the Game Day crew here tonight. Brett Stack, good to see you, buddy. Um, thanks, thanks. Out uh, with some surgery, and now uh, you've fully recovered. And I would say uh, fully keep... recovered. Okay, well, slowly there. But slowly there. You're a lot here. better than I was before. And That's now you true. dress much nicer too. Man. I know. Why, you Brett? It's like I saw on the text <laughs> messages. You are Christmas. GQ, man. This is our Christmas. Today. I was like, oh, okay, company Christmas party. Here we go. I got my Christmas sweater on. Yeah, and if uh, we can get it, can we zoom in on that a little bit? Yeah, they're doing it. Yeah, they're... those are eight pixel deer getting it on. Eight pixel, yes. Um, I figure we'd all should dress up for our first Christmas party as yeah, GDB we, Corporation. But... We do everything low budget here, like yeah. way low budget. And we budget. have done this, it's like our third Christmas now, so. True. This is the very first thing. Traditions are now formed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and this is, and usually <laughs> we forget. We usually we forget stuck with it for quite some time, now we can start forming traditions. We can. Well, good to have you back. I'm glad that you're uh, at least uh, mostly healthy mm -hmm. and uh, able to be here. Ramon Torres back as uh, as usual and ready yep. to go. I see you're still sporting some uh, some no, rounds on the we top there. I don't know. Just, okay. like, match the whole get up some. It's because it matched. So we need yeah. to get some game day battle uh, hats. Right. Yeah. That'll do. You are color coordinated. Thank you. He's always color coordinated. Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> DST sporting the um, I guess the yeah. uh, the humping uh, the humping animal. Yeah. Um, Please, teams. somebody else is in the Christmas spirit. It's festive. It's very festive. It is festive. So uh, sorry, I didn't make it to the ugly sweater. How about party. how about a festive? Mm. Festivus? Mm -hmm. Almost like offensive slash festive. Yeah, they're together now. That's good. That's good. You're welcome. Down. You're welcome. <laughs> that Thank just you. happened. Well, I'm Mike Glass. Uh, we've got a, a big show tonight. Now, of course, this is our last show because the world's about to end. Uh, the Mayans have predicted it, and it's going to be real, I'm sure. Get your sunscreen out for Friday. Yeah, you'll need, like, you'll need like SPF 6,000. Yeah, it's so. It's like 999 degrees. Yep. With fireballs raining down. That is the end of everything. We got a lot in that electricity thing, but on with the show. On with the show. <laughs> so, uh, this is obviously our last show because of the Mayan thing. Also, it's our Christmas special, so uh, we want to want to show some uh, some Christmas fun. Uh, things suck here in Cleveland. They usually do with, with sports. We get little uh, blips of, of awesomeness, and then we go back to our normal what just awesomeness. crappiness. I, every now and then it happens. But... Don't despair. We're we're, we're uh, despair. actually uh, putting in some some Christmas wishes. Uh, maybe Santa or whoever brings this shit will will help us out. Whoever um, brings this shit. <laughs> that'll be fun. Nothing for you. You're on the naughty list now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've been there actually. That trucker mouth. I've been there. <laughs> uh, well, we watched the Browns play, lose. We watched the season completely come to an end. Uh, we were excited after three wins. So we've got to look at uh, Brandon Weed. He was a first round pick. Got outplayed by a f uh, fourth round pick and both of them rookies, it, it was pathetic. Um, is it time to start thinking that maybe we don't want to give Brandon Weed another year? And maybe we do. Also, uh, what was it? Uh, his name Alfred, uh, Alfred Morris, another rookie, sixth round pick. Outplayed Trent Richardson and, and has played very well all season long. Yes. Did, we, did we choose wrong using a third pick of the, of the entire draft, the first round, on a running back? They got outplayed by a sixth round pick. Was there value elsewhere? So we're going to look into that. Uh, the tribe. This is this is winter time, but you will heat it up a little bit with uh, what do they call it? The uh, hot winter, uh, meetings. The winter, no, meetings. winter meetings. No, come on, the hot stove league or uh, whatever the fuck they call that shit. The melting pot. Shut up. You sorry, know what I'm talking sorry, about. Sorry. Thank you for nothing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Game Day Battle is brought to you by Bamboozles Restaurant and Lounge in Parma. They have the best drink specials anywhere. Seriously, buy one, get one free drinks. How often do you hear of it? You don't. They do it twice a week. Billy's mom makes the pasta sauce all the time, and the burgers, you simply won't find a better one. Check them out. Bamboozles.com. Again, Bamboozles.com. When you go there, tell them GDB sent you. Was inept. Who's our model? Who needs to get art? Oh, it is Christmas, everybody. Happy Christmas Whoa. or almost Christmas by the time you see this, maybe. It's kind of early, but it's coming up, dude. It's like do we get do we get a bonus? Yeah, right Christmas right bonus for the show. Do we get a Christmas bonus? Oh, cheers! There you I go. Think, <laughs> I think the people that just dressed up for uh, half a beer and tension for me. It was worth it. I'm sure I think the people would. that I think, I think the people that showed up for having a uh, company Christmas party should get a bonus. That's true. I the wore best my dressed. Christmas gear. I'm best dressed. Mm-hmm. 
I showed up at the company Christmas party. You guys, you while, while you are dressed up, you have no bestiality anywhere on your clothing. Or do you? We don't know that for sure. We can't see all of it. You got an elephant giving a rim job under there or something? <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, then I win. <laughs> we just had the, the, the snout, so that does seem like you'd be able to. Yeah, it's, uh, easily. it's Barry the brown nose reindeer. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dale. Um, I'm glad so, I can contribute. Yeah, <laughs> you that's what you contribute. It's that kind of stuff. That's where we have you here. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so it, it, it always kind of gets to be sort of a bad um, sports time this year, or this time of year in Cleveland. So instead, let's just kind of shift it a little bit. Everybody, oh, when you were a kid, you got to sit on, on Santa's lap, ask for some gifts, and your parents went out and bought them and pretended they were Santa, and you, were, you just thought it was cool. Then you, you started to know that no Santa, Santa wasn't real, and then, oh, fuck. There's no Santa? No. I'm sorry, dude. This is some fucking bullshit. No, man. I know. But then, then you're like, if some fat guy's going to give me presents and they're going to tell me that he exists, I don't care. Give me presents. I'll pretend. That's what we're doing here tonight. It's real. We have, we have Christmas wishes we want to throw out there, and maybe maybe we get them under our tree next year or after the Browns season if it's Browns related. So anything Cleveland, anything Cleveland. I'll start off with one. Go ahead, Mike. I will start off with one. My wish is that Art Modell, who passed away this year, uh, so tragic, and um, <laughs> that uh, well, as I have no idea as, where you're going. As, you're, as he you're as like he is going to, you know, he's, he's about to go through the, uh, the the pearly gates. He's walking in. He's seeing paradise. Purgatory. Everything that he's ever hoped eternal life could be. He gets a big, huge, divine orange and brown colored boot up his ass, out of the pearly gates, down where into the fiery pit where he gets to burn for eternity wow. for taking a Super Bowl team out of Cleveland and destroying destroying football in a town that really has had a long time winning tradition. Uh, no Super Bowl's fine, but competitive winning teams and just gutted us, killed us, and quite simply, good riddance. See you later. Um, that's my Christmas wish. Art Modell like that was, finds his way to hell. That was, that was cold-blooded, man. It was. Yeah. I'm sorry. Merry Christmas. That was cold-blooded. Okay. Art Modell. I'm a go. I'll make it simple. Go ahead. For the Dolans to get the fuck out of this city. There you go. That's my wish. That's it. Let's get the hell out of here and sell this team. Christmas tree. Just get the hell out, man. Mine's going to be plain simple, too. And it's just it's it's going to go from one spectrum to another. For any of these goddamn teams to win a championship in this godforsaken city. <laughs> well, I don't care who it is. Yeah. It could, be a, the, it could be the all-hated, I don't mind a big fan of Gladiators, but it could be them. I mean, it's anybody in this team, in this town, could please just win a championship and maybe get Cleveland a little higher up on there. All right. A championship anywhere with something. Hopefully it's the Monsters. Yeah, that'd be great because I'll be there. But, you know. I was on Santa's lap and I said, Santa, all I'll I want. about the first thing that pops up. All I want is, a, I just want an all-star. <laughs> I just want a superstar on the Browns. I want one of these guys to make that leap. And be the guy that you see in the Pro Bowl every year. I want Josh Gordon to catch 15 touchdowns and 1,000 yards and 100 balls. I want Trent Richardson to rush for 1,500 yards and 25 touchdowns. And just really do something so, so that Cleveland can somehow get back into the NFL and put our stamp on the league somehow. And, and draw attention to our city and, and, and give us that. I don't, I'm, I'm sad to even say his name, but that, that LeBron effect that we almost had in Cleveland. Just give us that all-star player that this city can jump on and... And then maybe take us to a championship because, you know, Brett, you were right on, man. We, we just want to win so bad, and I'll take anything, even if it's one of these young guys just progressing in and, and being an all-star caliber player. It'll just be wonderful. The, the fans of Cleveland, the, whatever team you're, you're the best fan at, we all deserve it. The city deserves it. The fans deserve it. It's just, just give us something. Something. Well, I have one more. I don't keep it. It's fucking Cleveland State. Just something. That It'd would be, be huge. Cleveland yeah. State? That would be yeah. amazing. What was that, like the 70s? You're being greedy. That's not good for Christmas. <laughs> That's what Christmas is all about. You're Give only, me shit. You're only supposed to make one wish. Really? Go ahead. Hit I on. get two. All right. Uh, my my second Christmas wish, maybe my most well, I, important. I get two, then. Yes, you get two. Okay. Ramon does not, though. Okay. Yeah. Um, my second Christmas wish is that Gruden who has some friends here, comes back to hang out over the, over the holidays, and they 
looking for something to do in the afternoon, head down to the Crazy Horse down, downtown Cleveland, my buddy Dale. I like where this is going. <laughs> shows him the time of his life. He has a great time, and he thinks to himself, Cleveland's a I forgot about this place. It's a no. pretty badass town. And he picks up the phone, yeah. calls Haslam, and says, maybe I am thinking about coaching again. And it's all oh. going to happen because of Dale Shantz Tercy's great management of the world, the world famous. The world famous. Crazy Horse Crazy Horse. Horse no, and then horrible. he calls his homeboys and goes, you're not going to believe where I found the hottest 19-year-old girls. <laughs> Ooh. So we lost, we can be really negative and, and, and we can really pick on a lot of things. Just real quick, was there anything positive anybody saw from this last game? Anything at all? People showed up to the game. <laughs> <laughs> it was a nice day. That was positive. But yeah, it was, it was a nice day. Warm. Six People tailgated. I mean, everybody that wanted to see RG3 didn't get to. Yeah. yeah. Because <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was the biggest headline in Cleveland. RG3 is not playing. Son of a bitch. You want this ticket? <laughs> Well, I think the the coaches and our uh, players were upset because that's all they kept giving compliments to in the press conference was to the Redskins and how well they played. Like they compliment the uh, their the other team more than their own team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in fact, I was still sad. In fact, I heard Shermer say in the press conference today that um, he said they didn't do anything that we haven't seen them do. They didn't do anything <laughs> different. And I think he was trying to say, like, oh, we weren't surprised. Well, okay, that's almost worse because now you were able to plan for it, you did plan for it, and your plan didn't work. I almost accept, whoa, they pulled some shit out of their ass, but um, that didn't happen. Here's the positive thing, a very positive thing. Shermer is definitely out of here now. If he wasn't already, he's gone. And, okay, well, yeah, we can, we can show some love there. Um, He's definitely gone now. I don't think anybody really can make a good case for keeping him, especially Haslam. So um, that's a positive, and I think that's, that's cool. We also see Trent Richardson and Whedon calling out the coaching staff. And I think that's a positive development because it, it shows a, a shift. Everybody knows everything's going to change, and everybody's got to sort of you know, stake their territory or at least sort of lay claim for what they've done and what they weren't able to do because of everybody else. We now get to see what's been going on all season long and where, where things have been failing, where things have been falling short, and quite simply, who has been falling short. And I think we get to see a lot more of that as, as the next few weeks unfold. And then, of course, you know, after the turn of the year and uh, things start really really getting torn apart. You know what's crazy, right? Because everybody's like, you know, we're in a tall Shermer. Uh, but I think this were actually sealed uh, Heckard's, uh, you know, career here as well as being done, you know? No. Uh, this, save Heckard. It was like the same, uh, something that me and you could do up there. It's common sense that the top running back, so we, of course we're going to pick him at three. Um, you know, just things that, that you that everyday people can do. Did he draft yeah. Hardesty? Yeah. Heckert? He drafted Hardesty and that, that and Cole McCoy. So and he, that did busted. Double, he did have to double draft positions. So mm -hmm. and then he goes and tries to get a quarterback to try to fix that and that didn't work. Only positive thing we got out of here is is, is Gordon. And everybody's like, oh man, you know, let's keep him here. He he drafted good, you know, he's a good GM and all this. But I didn't see anything. Positive thing? Like, I don't think Weeding was a good pick at all. I didn't say. I, it, I it was, said that was that worse. Draft. Yeah, Trevor Richardson. But was you a know, good pick. Hardesty was a worse. You know, we passed on Adrian Peterson for that. You know, let, let's, he don't. We don't want him because he got a bad knee. We, we we picked up somebody with two bad knees, and we keep signing him year to year. So it, it's just a lot of things that we see in this guy, and I think you know, this sealed the fate for the whole coaching staff. So it's going to be like clean slate. Let's get everybody the hell out of here. And especially the, the, the offensive coordinator, everybody thinks he's doing good, but I don't think he's, I don't know, man. This is just bad. Just bad just stuff. Just bad. It, the, the play calling was just horrible. The screens, you see those screens, how lousy they were? I don't know. It's, it was just, just bad all the way around. Well, and um, frustrating. It's hard to see how good the plays were when the quarterback really seemed to be uh, holding the ball too long, indecisive, uh, laying on his receivers prior to uh, to the throws, and I, I think I think that's where you can probably credit uh, some of the uh, well the, the turnovers and, and and some of the biggest problems. Really, is just on Whedon's inability to just make things happen, to will it, to. 
to, to pull everything together that he's learned all year long and just make it happen. This was a big, big game for them. It's a game they could have won. It's a game that would have made, made them um, continuing a winning streak that could have potentially led them to the, to the, the playoffs or at least had us at the end of the season almost there. Uh, yeah, we had it. No, we had it because we needed a Jets loss. Uh, playoffs? We needed a Jets Stop. loss. <laughs> huh? We still, we still had a Stop. chance. It was, we it was, had a chance. It was, no, it was fun talking about it. We never Everybody had a chance. Was, and now it's on to that draft talk. Now it's on to the draft talk. Coming up in April. And, and at least, no, we, made, at least right. we made it halfway through December. That's true. Right. That's <laughs> right. Normally it's like November. You, you guys, I made credit to them for You guys didn't even have them win five games. It's true. You know? True. So I that's, think a positive. that's a big, po that's sure. a big positive. Yeah. Two more games. And we still could win between Denver, who doesn't care at this yeah, point. Yeah, they already lost. And then up. the Steelers, who if they win next week, or this week actually with Cincinnati, I think they're secured. And they don't need to win against Those Cleveland. If they Steelers, lose against, they always sneak in in the end. Man. They do, they do. If they lose against Cincinnati, then they have to be Cleveland, and Cincinnati will have to lose. Well, I'd love to be playing spoiler. That'd be yeah. great. That would be great. Yeah, that'd that would be, be a lot of fun. And uh, the Steelers aren't doing so well themselves. We Roethlisberger is actually calling out his offensive coordinator and his coaching staff. Yeah, I think he actually said that uh, Mike Tomlin wasn't black enough for him. Is that what it was? <laughs> so he's like, he's like, I need you know what? I need Tomlin to support the cause. You get suspended. Out of here. Get some out. No, get him some cornrows. <laughs> Nothing. No. Oh no. man. Uh, referencing uh, who was it that got uh, ESPN? Uh, Rob something. Rob, Whatever. Yeah. Rob yeah. Blagojevich. That's probably <laughs> suspended <laughs> indefinitely. Rob something. I don't know. <laughs> Say, for saying RG three wasn't black enough. Was that basically what the? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's saying that he, he yeah, yeah. That's just dumb. <laughs> I mean, we he, can do that he, here. If Stephen but... A. Smith is shaking his head at you, <laughs> you fucked up, <laughs> man. <laughs> you, know, you know what's crazy, though? I was, I, I, I was thinking to myself today, I said, man, you know, Pat Shermer don't even care about even trying to save his career here. You know, that's because that's because even no, but you you think done. maybe he'd pull he weed in and try to put a coin in to see if he can shake something up. That's desperation. But yeah, but that's of course like, you want to save your career so, here. Yeah, he if you plan on done. staying. Now yeah. he's like, oh fuck, I'm I'm already out this. You know, I'm I got half one out the door. Fun while it lasts. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go ahead and uh, close down Brandon Weeden for the rest of the <laughs> season. <laughs> but why wouldn't you like? You okay? Like you could see Rex Ryan in there. Trying, he puts Tebow in. Let's see if he can shake this up, take him out. You know, maybe he can spark the offense. That's different, though. I mean, if if um, if Shermer was part of bringing Colt McCoy here, and that's his guy, yeah, here's an opportunity. Look, everything else has failed. I'm out of here. I'm gonna at least show you what I thought we could do with this guy. Throw him in, and if he succeeds, then everybody can step back and say maybe you had a plan, and we just haven't let you uh, fulfill that plan. But Colt McCoy is not his guy. He throws him in. If he wins, if he does well, all we do is say, "Well, we've seen this from Colt McCoy." <coughs> yeah, yeah. And if he does, if he loses, then it's like, "Well, obviously it's desperation, and it, it's worse than." It so, but it's seems, still, though, I it's still like a win-win though, because you don't know what you're gonna get. It's a lose-lose. <laughs> you know? It's a lose-lose. If they win, it's not like we're gonna yeah. think, "Oh, Colt McCoy's our future." It's yeah, a lose-lose. Yeah, I don't know. You know, the three-game, the three-game win streak was really nice. It was nice to win against some crappy teams, but yep. unfortunately, that was my big point. unfortunately, we got back to reality this week. And you know, Mike Shanahan has the Redskins ready to play playoff football with or without RG three. As we've seen, it, it looks like he's not their entire team, even though he's a big part of that offense. And uh, you know, they exploited our defense big time. Our, our defense allowed uh, 430 something yards, I believe, was mm -hmm. the most all year. We we got smoked on the, on the defensive end of the ball, and on offense. I don't know what the game plan was. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it started off good. Only Trent Richardson, he got in the end zone on those short uh, goal line carries, but only 11 carries, 27 yards. We needed mm -hmm. more consistency on the run, and we couldn't get it because we were we were down points and we were forced to pass. You know, uh, as I told you guys, I didn't really watch too much football this weekend as I was fantasy scorn, but I did catch the second half of the game, and I was watching Brandon Whedon trying to win the game, you know, and take us down and. I think we've just been seeing what we've been seeing from him all year, yeah, and that's yeah. just the the inability for him to take over a game. Mm -hmm. We're 16 weeks yep. in now, and we have not seen him do it one time where he's had that 300-yard, four-touchdown game where we mm -hmm. simply won because he took over the game, and we haven't seen that. And the whole rookie thing, I you know that argument probably got old in week eight, and now here we are in week 16. But I think you still got to give him another year to develop. You know, if if Colt McCoy can come out and beat him in camp or something next year, and the new coach sees more in Colt, I, I still think we're going to see Whedon here for another year. But I like the potential of the group of guys that we got as a side of all that RG three talk and what we would have had to give up to get him. Right. You know, so uh, I think we got a lot. We spread it out. 
you know, all over the field. And we've got a, a lot of young talent that I can't wait to see what a real head coach can, can mold with these guys. Um, but one guy that I know I've been high on all last year, and I got some flack from you guys, because I know how the song goes, we don't give a crap about the whole, uh, whole state of Michigan or whatever, whatever it is. Uh, Kirk Cousins was uh, Michigan State's quarterback, and I said he was a, he was a good, good quarterback then, and definitely worth more than a sixth round pick or fourth round pick, whatever he was. Uh, he came out and showed uh, what we wanted to see from Whedon. I don't know about that. But. 36 out of 30, or 26 out of 37, for 329 yards. Your quarterback, Brandon Whedon, with an entire season almost under his belt and more experience, is supposed to be more mature and, and have this together better. 21 of 35 for 244 yards. To me, to me, that is a really, really bad sign. And I am such a stickler or, or such a promoter of giving a quarterback a team and letting him have it, letting him develop and become that guy. You've got to show better in a big game the biggest game of the year for, the, for this team against a team that can be beaten, you've got to show better than that, and you cannot be the problem on the team, and he was the problem. Yeah, but I'm done buying into the whole backup quarterback success thing. You know, we saw Matt Castle when he stepped in for Tom Brady, and he went on to be a, to be a bust. We saw Matt yeah. Flynn with Green Bay, and he went on to Seattle, and he hasn't taken a snap all year. The thing about these guys that come in is that you don't have any film on them. You know what I mean? You, yeah. don't, you don't know what's what style mm -hmm. quarterback they are. I'm not saying that's the sole excuse for it, but when you got a young guy... And granted, he does have talent, which he came in and shown. He also came in and kept them in that game the week before when he threw that touchdown to Garcon. Mm -hmm. You know, they didn't, he didn't give up, and they needed him to step in. Cold turkey with four plays left, the game-winning yep. drive, and he got it done. So he came in today, and he, or, you know, Sunday he had poise. But you know, a young guy like that, you just you don't you don't know how they play. But do I think he's like some savior that should be uh, anointed, <laughs> you know, higher than our quarterback? I don't, I don't know. Well, you, you, My, look, look at Whedon. I'm sorry. Look, look at Whedon's first game. They didn't have to film on him then. I'm not and saying that. everybody. I'm not <laughs> okay. saying everybody. I'm still saying the guy had talent. You know, okay, what I mean? right, obviously right. to put together a 300 yard passing game. So, oh, I'm sorry, Brett. Go ahead. I think I think it really comes down to the the point of the whole organization itself. I think it comes to the head coaching, to the offensive coordinators, defensive coordinators, to quarterbacks. You know, coach. Redskins have a very good coaching core. You start with Mike Shanahan, and you go and you branch out. Shanahan's been there for you know, a couple years now, and they've progressively gotten better each year. And they went out and got to the guys they needed, Pierre Grasson, you know, RG3. Hey, they march down when they need to. Do what you have to, that's, that's the rule. Do what you have to do when you have to do it. Sometimes it ain't pretty, Dale. We only have a small bit of time left. <laughs> As Dale just showed us, we have a small amount of time left, a very small amount of time, and we like to use this time to raise our beers. Uh, it's a Christmas uh, raising of the beer tonight. We've got actually some, uh, it's a winterish beer, it's not even Christmas ale. And uh, yeah, go ahead, tell them all about it, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> tell them all about it. <laughs> My point was that uh, this is this is kind of the the, the fun of the winter time is is. Good it's the, save. It's the Christmas beers. I'm raising my beer to Christmas ale, which we don't have tonight, damn it. Oh, man. You fucked up my raising, Dale. You fucked it up. It's I'm ruined. Pretty, I'm pretty sure I was going to segue going. right into it. Man. Christmas ale, thank you. We don't have you tonight because somebody, Dale's on beer, and we got some vanilla crap. Vanilla crap? That's what I'm raising my beer to is my vanilla crap, <laughs> which I think is just wonderful. It's a line and Kugel, Snowdrift, Vanilla Porter, and it is... Tell them all about it, Dale. Delicious. Tell them. Delicious. I think it's delicious. With 8.3 <laughs> ounces of uh, hops, mm. it is. <laughs> That's delicious. It's got a lot of, a lot of hops. <laughs> hops in it. <laughs> all right, this is all fucked up. Somebody else go. Merry go fucking ahead, Christmas. I'm going to raise my beer. Don't to, do it. Uh, Don't do it. <laughs> Ixnay on the Itzke. <laughs> I want to raise my beer to my grandmother. Come home uh, shortly here for Christmas. Uh, I love you. Uh, I'm glad you're in a, you're at ICU tonight and you're in regular room. So uh, I'll drink to that as well. Uh, I'll come my back beer home. Yet. My second one is to the town of Newtown, Connecticut. Uh. That's it. That's all I'm saying. My heart goes out to you. I'm here. We're here praying for you. No, that's nice. I shouldn't. I shouldn't. Yeah, I'm yeah, they'll shit all over his and mine. I shouldn't hate on that. I'm pouring my beer out to the uh, coaching staff, 
Um, you guys sealed your fate uh, this past week with that uh, loss, and hey, goodbye, and we should just go out there and play with no coaches and just let the team just do what they want to do. Sort of like Varsity Blues. <laughs> sort of like Varsity Blues, baby. <laughs> You're the starting quarterback now, Mox. Yeah. Hey, Brett, here's to your health, too, buddy. Welcome back, man. Oh, yeah, yeah Brett. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Good to have you back. Good to have everybody here. Merry Christmas to you all. And um, to all a good night. He's right here fucking. That's what's going on here. <laughs> have a great Christmas, G2B fans. Yeah, yeah and if we never see you again, because we're all dead. It was, it's it's happy, happy New Year. Fun. Yeah, that's reindeer have style. A, have a great New Year. Have a great New Battle Year. Battle on. Hey guys. Oh, by the way, since uh, we're not going to be it's here. It's a fucking apocalypse. Go uh, buy some ammo. Go Irish. Go Irish, really? January 7th. Oh, oh, that's why you ain't gonna be here. Is that a Monday night? That is a mandatory Monday night. Are you going to the game? Yeah. You going? Yep. Miami. Are you serious? No. no. Are you serious? Actually, I was just gonna tell everybody uh, that that's a mandatory work night. That Monday night. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. Right. Yep. Nice. Everybody's gotta be here, or else your pay's getting docked.